Hi, Miss Newbern here. Today we're going to be learning about soil conservation. So make sure you get out your science journal to take notes. So the first uh, thing is we're going to be setting up our Cornell notes. On the left, you're going to write your focus questions. So they are, why is fertile soil considered a non-renewable resource? How can soil lose its value? And what are some ways that soil can be conserved? So once again, you may need to pause the video, write these down, set up your notes. We have one root, I suppose I should have said root instead of roots. We have one root for today. And so once again, you need to go in your science journal and highlight um, the root rota, which means to turn. And um, this is found in words like rotate, so to like the earth rotates or turns around the sun. Um, and an important thing about when you're building vocabulary is sometimes you can get more than one word out of it. So you get the verb rotate, but you also get the noun rotation. So that's kind of a helpful kind of strategy when you're um, learning new words. So the first focus question is why is fertile soil considered a non-renewable resource? So first off, let's identify what is a natural resource. So a natural resource is anything that humans use in the environment. So for example, it's anything from fresh air and water to you know fish that we eat, to the energy that we use, um, to metal ores. So humans use lots of things. <laughs> now, non-renewable specifically means a natural resource that is not replaced in a useful time frame. So for example, oil takes a couple million years to make. So when we use it up, it's not going to be replaced in a usable time frame. Um, and as we learned, soil takes, you know the answer, 500 to 1,000 years to make an inch of soil um, because of the weathering that's involved. So although we can make more soil, you know, in less time than it takes to make oil, not really a useful time frame. So if we lose what we have, it's not going to be replenished in our lifetime. So how can soil, so this is the second focus question, so how can soil lose its value? So there's basically, you know, two primary ways, which is soil can lose its fertility. Um, so that often happens when the same plant is, it's planted over and over again. So for example, um, you know, in the South, they planted cotton, 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 cotton. And what happened is the soil became exhausted. It got depleted and it lost a lot of its nutrients. Um, so when that happened, we were fortunate to have this brilliant American scientist, Benjamin Manneker, who realized that um, peanuts, which are in the legume family, fix nitrogen. That means they take it out of the air, nitrogen out of the air, and they're able to kind of, with the help of these little bacteria on their roots, they're able to fix it and make it available to the plant. And by doing this, it was actually able to bring more fertility to the soil and pretty much saved the southern agriculture. So that's why we plant our cover crops, especially the leguminous ones like the fava beans and all that, to kind of improve the fertility of our soil. Now another way that soil can lose its value is the topsoil, that rich organic layer, can be lost. And it's um, lost because when the soil is exposed, um, so let's say for example they're farming and you know they pull the crops out or and before they planted anything else to kind of get its roots back in there to hold things in place, water or wind can blow it away in a process called erosion. Um, we will watch a video in class uh, by um, PBS. It's a PBS series called Surviving the Dust Bowl. And you know we'll see when this is done on a large scale, kind of the impact um, that it had. And currently our modern agriculture practices, um, you know, they're doing some things that are definitely not um, very favorable in terms of soil conservation, planting the same crop over and over again, not having a lot of diversity. Um, and then having barren soil at, from time to time. So there's definitely some concerns around that. So what are some of the ways that soil can be conserved? So one thing is just the way in which um, when they're bringing in like heavy equipment like plows, you can go um, downslope 
And then if it rains, basically it's going to go shoo, straight down and it's also going to take water with us, water with uh, water and uh, soil with it. So the other way is you can actually plow on the contour. So we talked about um, topographic maps and those contour lines. So if you're going with the contour and you plant that way, kind of like down here, uh, it will actually minimize erosion. So actually the plants will actually slow down the water, help it spread it out and then sink it in to the soil and then it will lose less soil in erosion and also it can go deeper in and be available for the plants. Conservation plowing is often called like low till or no till which means they're not really digging up the stuff and letting kind of the weeds stay in place there. Another strategy is crop rotation where you're not planting the same thing over and over again so it's not like you're planting cotton 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 or corn 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 you know, you might plant corn in there one year and then the next year you might plant tomatoes and the next year you're going to plant something from like beans. And um, so you've got this rotation going on. And we're going to be doing that in our food forest where we've got the different beds and then we're going to kind of rotate through and we'll also be rotating in cover crops. So one year it's going to be in bed 17 and the next year it'll be in bed 16. So we're going to be improving the soil as we go that way. Now another strategy that's not mentioned in the textbook is planting perennials because if you're not planting annuals which you have to dig up and kind of expose the possibility of being having bare soil which can be easily eroded just by planting perennials you're kind of eliminating uh, quite a bit of that. Now one thing I want to kind of invite you to think about is this concept of going beyond conservation. So it's one thing to kind of conserve the soil but we've already gotten to the point where we've lost a huge portion of our soil. Um, and so there is a type of work that I do called permaculture, which stands for permanent agriculture. And it's saying, you know, hey, we need to go beyond just conserving the soil. We actually need to go to this process of regenerating it. So that means we, we need to go and we need to renew the soil, restore it. Um, and some of the things that we'll be doing specifically are we'll be having mulch plants um, such as, you know, comfrey, um, and that we can actually cut it down and then it can actually um, decrease the erosion. I mean, sorry, can it decrease the, um, the evaporation and it can also add nutrients to the soil. And it also is going to be a nutrient accumulator, which means it's got these deep roots. So also like our daikon, when we plant that, it goes deep down, pulls up nutrients from below and makes that available to the other plants. So those are some of the ways that we can regenerate the soil besides just conserving it. So at this point, um, once again, just kind of, I want you to do a summary at the bottom of your page and kind of addressing the focus questions. Once again, why is fertile soil considered a non-renewable resource? How can soil lose its value? And what are some ways that the soil can be conserved? Once again, if you need more resources, you can go to RebeccaNewburn.com and have a lovely day.